Did you know that the Philippines has just banned everything Chinese? Not just their products, but their culture, services, trade, and everything else. Imagine walking into your favorite store, only to find entire aisles empty, your online shopping cart suddenly filled with error messages, and that your new iPhone that you've been saving for is no longer there. It's indefinitely out of stock. This scenario might sound like something out of a movie, but it could be a reality if the Philippines ever decided to sever ties with China. Imagine waking up to the news that the Philippine Senate is close to making a historic decision, one that could change the nation's economy and reshape its relationships with other countries. In an unexpected bold move, the Senate is debating a bill to cut all trade ties with China, the Philippines' biggest trading partner. If this bill becomes law, it would signal a major shift in the country's foreign policy, possibly shaking the economy to its core, while sending a strong message to the world about the Philippines' stance on sovereignty and security. As the debates heat up in the Senate, the entire nation is watching, fully aware that the impact of this decision will be felt far beyond the islands. So let's begin with the effect of the ban on the Chinese economy. How would this ban affect the Chinese economy? If the Philippines bans Chinese products, it could disrupt global supply chains that rely on the Philippines for market access or as a transit point. This might lead to higher costs or delays for goods in other parts of the world. Chinese manufacturers that export goods to the Philippines might face problems such as reduced production, factory closures, or job losses, especially in sectors heavily relying on Philippine buyers. So China might try to make up for this by building stronger trade ties with other Southeast Asian countries or emerging markets. It could also focus on boosting domestic consumption to counteract the impact of lost exports. Chinese companies might look for new markets in Southeast Asia, Africa, or Latin America to reduce their dependency on the Philippine market. China could also retaliate with trade measures like tariffs or bans on Philippine goods, which could lead to a trade dispute. But such a move would depend on the larger geopolitical situation and China's strategic priorities. Overall, while a ban would affect certain sectors and companies, it probably would not have a huge impact on China's economy as a whole. China's extensive global trade network means losing the Philippine market might not significantly harm its economic growth but could highlight the risks of depending too much on one market. The relationship between the Philippines and China is complex, to say the least. On one hand, China is a key trading partner with billions of dollars worth of goods exchanged between the two nations every year. On the other hand, there are ongoing territorial disputes in the South China Sea, and China's growing influence in the region is a concern. So the question is, could the Philippines actually survive without Chinese products? Let's be realistic. Banning all Chinese products overnight is a suicide. The immediate impact on the Philippine economy would not be pretty. A huge portion of these everyday items come from China. And it's not just finished products. We're talking about raw materials and components that Filipino businesses rely on. Factories might have to shut down because they cannot get the supplies they need, and prices for everything would skyrocket as demand outstrips supply. And it's not like China would just sit back and take it. They'd feel the loss of a significant export market, but they have options. They could easily find other buyers for their products. The Philippines, on the other hand, would be scrambling to fill the void. For the average Filipino, this ban would mean a harsh reality check. Those affordable Chinese-made clothes and gadgets that everyone loves, gone. 
affordable electronics gun. Some might see this as an opportunity to support local businesses, and in theory, that's great. But in reality, Filipino companies would struggle to ramp up production fast enough to meet the demand. Even if they could, the cost of producing goods locally would likely be much higher, meaning consumers would have to dig deeper into their already strained wallets. So tough choices would be on the horizon. Do you pay exorbitant fees for locally made products or do you go without? It's a lose-lose situation, especially for those already struggling to make ends meet. Things get even more complicated when you consider the political and geopolitical implications. A move like this would send shockwaves through the region and beyond. China would not be pleased to say the least, they might retaliate with own trade barriers, hitting the Philippines where it hurts. Then there is the geopolitical chess game. The US, always eager to counter China's influence, might see this as an opportunity to strengthen ties with the Philippines. But would that come at a cost? Would the Philippines end up trading one big brother or another? It's a delicate balancing act and one wrong move could have serious consequences. The Philippines would need to navigate this complex web of international relations. So let's say the Philippines goes through with this ban. Where do they turn to fill the massive gap filled by Chinese goods? Some countries might see this as an opportunity. Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia, these Southeast Asian neighbors could step up their game, trying to grab a piece of the pie. But could they really compete with China on price and scale? The Philippines would need to get creative looking beyond its immediate region. Maybe India or perhaps Russia could become a major supplier, or maybe Mexico, eager to reduce its dependence on America. Could this be the moment for the Philippines? Necessity is the mother of invention. After all, maybe this ban could be the push that the Philippines needs to finally invest in its own industries. Imagine a Philippines where local businesses are thriving, creating high quality goods that can compete on a global scale. Instead of relying on cheap imports, Filipino entrepreneurs could seize the moment, developing innovative products and technologies. The government could offer incentives for startups and invest in research and development. It would take time, effort, and a whole lot of capital, but it's not impossible. Who knows, maybe this crisis would be the catalyst for a new era of Filipino invention and self-reliance. Let's be honest, there is a price to pay for everything. And in this case, the cost of economic independence from China would be steep. We're talking about a potential recession, job losses, and a lower standard of living for many Filipinos. The question is, would it be worth it? That's a tough one. Some might argue that the economic pain is a small price to pay for standing up to China and reclaiming national pride. Others might say that it's not wise to jeopardize the economy for a symbolic victory. There is no easy answer. Banning Chinese products would be a bold move for the Philippines with significant economic and political consequences. While it could demonstrate a strong stance against perceived Chinese aggression, the Philippines would need to carefully manage the resulting challenges, diversifying trade partners, boosting local production, and engaging in strategic diplomacy would be crucial steps to mitigate the risks and ensure the country's long-term stability and prosperity.